Richard Kern. So why it's exciting to me that, that we're looking at uh, photonic and electronic integration uh, or tighter integration of optics and electronics is we're actually starting to see in the industry, it's becoming more difficult to carry electrons for any significant distance. As the data rates keep increasing, the ability to drive those electrons starts to cost us a lot in power. And what's happening is, is the photonics are actually able to carry those over significantly greater distances at a much lower power. Uh, and now what's happening is you're getting this transitioning of, I've got to use photonics. If I'm gonna be using this much photonics, why am I creating it as a separate element? So why am I not looking at tighter integration of these devices? And that's where we've seen a lot of trends in the industry in, in you know, the last year, year and a half, two years, uh, you know, looking at bringing those optics closer and closer to actually do a much larger integration. A lot of the changes that have occurred uh, since 50 years ago, when it was originally proposed to do some of this integration, a lot of the changes have been the economics of it. Uh, optics typically have been very, very high cost, I mean, high dollar items. Uh, therefore, it was used in, in minimal capacity. We tried to use much lower cost materials for other portions of our networks. That's, that's changing. As data rates are going up, the economics of using photonics is actually becoming uh, much more comparable. And, and quite honestly, there's certain things you can't do anymore with electronics and therefore you have to go to photonics and we've seen the price trends coming down for photonics and the cost trends for being used you know using traditional uh, copper technology going up and we're now at a point where you know we can start to see in the future that we will have uh, price parity and once you start seeing that then the economics of, of being able to do this just makes sense Some of the biggest challenges that we're seeing uh, for expanding data centers and infrastructure is related to power consumption. Uh, power is basically our commodity that we measure our data centers on. Uh, so we have footprints and data centers are all based on power numbers and stuff. That power is actually a very precious resource. It's not like power is unlimited to us. Uh, therefore, when we want to grow and move up in technology, power consumption becomes a critical element. And one of the areas where we've seen power, uh, I'd say wastage or whatever, is the fact that we're having to use power to drive uh, some of these electronic components, where if I start looking at how I can integrate uh, photonics and electronics together, you know, we're seeing power estimation numbers where we can save 20 to 30 percent potentially and, and maybe even more over time. Uh, and, and that savings is what I can return to my customers. Right. I can give them more computational power. I can give them more capabilities in our data center. So being able to take away from the power that we're burning in our infrastructure and being able to put it to our compute resources is, is beneficial for our end customers and, and for the industry in general. So the next big thing after discrete transceivers and front plate you know, face plate pluggable optic modules, there's a tongue twister for you, uh, is moving the optics inside, doing more integration of these elements. Uh, this is actually a critical next step for our industry. If we look at what it takes to, to build these systems, for example, uh, you want to do an optical backplane, you know, you're not going to go and take optics, face plate pluggable optics, you're going to want something closer to that element that drives an optical backplane. Uh, so there's there's all these changes that are going on and, and 
part of that transition is to realize, okay, the next coming technology trend will be driving more optical interfaces. And that means that you have to look at how do we integrate these together. And, and that's been uh, sort of considered the utopia for our industry for a number of years. There have been many, many companies over time that have, have tried to bring that integration together to bring the ability to do photons off of these uh, chips and, and CPUs, GPUs, MPUs, switches, whatever. And, th and that's only going to continue that trend. And so that's the next big thing. You know, we'll move away from using these fa faceplate pluggable, uh, get the people so they don't have to touch those those optical modules anymore and have that embedded in these systems. And, and that will allow us to be able to test the systems uh, prior to deploying them in our data centers and, and hopefully accelerate the ability to deploy optical interfaces. So COBO is a, it stands for the Consortium for Onboard Optics. And then there's another effort called Co-Package Optics. Um, the, both, of these opti both of these programs are literally saying, let's move optics inside the systems. Uh, optics used to be, for years, I mean, we've done embedded optics. That's not an uncommon thing. Uh, COBO has actually said, let's create a standard around embedded optics. And, and they did that. And, and one of the things we saw is, hey, this changes the operating model. There's certain implications here. There's certain things that need to be developed uh, to be able to, to take advantage of this. The nice thing uh, for Kobo is it kind of changed people's minds and said, okay, look, we can now move optics inside these systems. How can I even move them for tighter integration? And that's what co-packaging is looking at. And, you know, there's, got, there's a guidance document that comes from the co-package optics uh, Joint Development Foundation effort, and then there's uh, co-package optics that are being worked on by various standards bodies. Uh, Kobo, for example, is working on it. OIF is looking into it. There's a number of organizations that are paying attention to co-package optics. The critical element for that is that's an ecosystem that has to be developed. It's very different than how we do it today, where I buy a piece of switch silicon and I buy an optics and I put them together inside a system and and there's my switch. Uh, now we're talking about doing that at the at the actual component level, you know, where you know you will have that switch silicon and that optical engine be co-packaged on a device, and and that's going to provide us the ability to make significant power reduction. Now it also adds a lot of business complexity, and that's where a lot of the work has to go on. How do you develop a healthy ecosystem? How do you make sure everybody can compete and, and, and drive that? And that's where we look to uh, standards organizations to help with that, to help create those specifications that are necessary to build a healthy and competitive ecosystem. The industry right now with uh, electronic and photonic integration is really on the cusp of, of moving into this. Uh, yeah. As was mentioned earlier, there's been an attempt at this for many, many years to try to do this type of integration. Now it's, it's, it's a need to have, it's, it's a must do. And the reason why it's a must do is the ability to drive uh, electrical interconnect even to optics that sit on the faceplate or even to optics nearby as we start going up in bandwidth. And we want to achieve bandwidth density on some of these next devices to be able to continue to scale and move forward. You have to have that integration. That has to start to happen because that's the only way you're gonna be able to move the bandwidth off these devices. Because you know silicon devices are kind of constrained as to how big they can be. They have met, you know, they keep pushing their physical limits, but now we need to be able to figure out a way to actually help them get the bandwidth density that they can in the future. And the only way that we can do that is actually to drive that photonic electronic integration. And that's why you're seeing a lot of the big players right now, the big end users that are saying, this is what I need. This is how we need to proceed. And, and the industry is stepping up to, to figure out how to make that work. 
at Pam.